Hello and welcome to That Dory B. If you ever feel irrelevant, just remember that I still have a Wii U plugged in. Picture this, the year's 2010 and after the raging success of the DS and Wii, Nintendo is thinking of breaking back into the core gaming market. You see, much of the success of that generation came from the general public instead of the gaming community. This was more prevalent on the Wii side, which made sense considering the controller was literally a glorified TV remote. The DS was less like this, as the touchscreen on it was just an addition to the regular control methods, but on the other hand, a good amount of the library was that. Anyway, on March the 23rd, 2010, the 3DS was announced, with a full reveal at E3 later that year. Quite a few games were revealed, such as Kid Icarus Uprising, Metal Gear Solid 3, a new Animal Crossing and Mario Kart game, and even remakes of a couple Nintendo 64 games, reminiscent of Mario 64 DS. The console was released in Japan on the 26th of February 2011, and in the US and Europe the following month, for the price of $249.99. Uh, hi, I'd like to sell a kidney. Not too many people were fond of this price, however, so the price was cut by almost a third. So the early adopters didn't start a revolt, people who bought the system before the price cut were given free games on the Virtual Console, including Game Boy Advance games which never became public to any other 3DS users for the entire lifespan of the console. Like, you already made the games work, why are you preventing yourself from making money? Hey, just letting you know, we managed to port GBA games onto the 3DS. Cool, when can I buy them? You can't. Saying the 3DS was a slow start would be an understatement. It launched in Japan with a mere 8 games, one of them being a 3D remaster of Excite Bike and another being whatever that is. Besides Excite Bike, the only other Nintendo published launch title was Nintendogs and Cats. Nintendogs and Cats! Fast forward a year, however, and the 3DS was finally getting some traction, with a solid amount of games released and an XL version in the works. Another thing in the works was the Wii U, which had been announced at E3 2011. People were confused, to say the least. One reporter at CNN went as far as to call the console a new controller for the Wii. Where's the jump button? Despite all this, the Wii U launched on the 18th of November in the US, with it launching in Europe later that month and Japan in December. Now, do you remember what I said about the 3DS having a slow start? Well, at least it had a start. Even though the Wii U had much more content from the get-go, and lo and behold, an actual number of Nintendo releases, there just wasn't that much hype for this controller system. It was actually at this point when the Wii U sold the most, and that was just the initial sales that come with a new generation of consoles. It's clear who the winner of this round is, it's gotta go to the 3DS. Next, we're going to have a look at graphics. Now, the way I'm going to do this is to compare the graphics to the console's predecessor instead of each other. Like, obviously the Wii U's going to look better, but how much of a jump was it from the system before it? Now, the Wii U particularly excels in this area, mainly because it's up against the Wii, and the Wii's graphics are basically what happens when you mix a fever dream and a child's playset. The Wii U was Nintendo's first HD console, and it works really well. Games look really crisp on this console compared to its predecessor. Things like Pikmin 3, Xenoblade Chronicles X, New Super Mario Bros. U are all miles ahead in the graphical department compared to their Wii counterparts. The 3DS was also a good step forward in the graphical department compared to the DS. The main upgrade was the glasses free 3D screen, allowing for games to be more immersive. I'm aware the opinion on this feature is a bit split, but personally I'm a fan. Hey, I love headaches! The extra power that came with the 3DS also meant that it could finally do games in 3D properly. And by properly, I mean graphics that don't look like my sleep paralysis demon. However, I do think the Wii U was a bigger step forward in this department. The next section is games. Which console had the best selection of games? While I will say that both of these consoles had a fairly crap selection at the start of their lifespan, they did receive some notable titles down the line. The Wii U had games such as Mario 3D World, the HD remasters of Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, Pikmin 3, Smash Bros for Wii U, and a good selection of virtual console releases. It's also backwards compatible with Wii titles, which is one of the main reasons I still have it plugged in. Not to mention, there were quite a few new IPs released on the system, such as Splatoon and the yellow smudge on my shelf. Uh, sorry, Mario Maker. Not to say that the library didn't have its shortcomings, there were a lot of missing titles on the console. There wasn't even a Zelda game on it until the Switch was released, and by that point, no one cared anymore. The 3DS's library was a lot more rounded, it didn't take as many risks as new IPs, but quite a lot more returning franchises showed off on it. This did mean that quite a lot of games just seemed a bit too basic compared to what they were used to. A prime example of this is Mario Kart 7, when compared to the chaotic Mario Karts of the DS and Wii, it just seemed a bit soulless. The library did have some good games though, such as Animal Crossing New Leaf, a good selection of the Pokemon games, as well as Pilot. Wings Resort. However, I do have to give this one to the Wii U, as it took more chances and was just a bit more interesting of a selection. This is a tough one. The Wii U console wasn't too different from how the Wii looked, and the main difference was with the gamepad. This thing was something else, it had a TV remote, it had a camera, it had a crappy screen, what more do you need? 
The gamepad and the TV worked much like an unnecessarily large DS, so much that it even came with its own stylus. However, all of these features provided the gamepad with the worst battery life ever seen on a controller. The original 3DS was the epitome of the phrase form over function. It looks great, but some elements are just a bit overlooked. For example, the circle pad leaves a mark on the top screen which is super annoying. Also, the start, select and home buttons are about as high quality as the content I put out on my old channel. Yep, it's just because I haven't been HOLDING THE BUTTON. Luckily, all of these problems were fixed with the 3DS XL and further improved on with the new 3DS line. There was also a budget option without 3D called the 2DS and a somewhat premium but less premium than the 3DS XL called the new 2DS XL. You what? Yeah, Nintendo didn't have the best naming scheme during this era. I think this round has to go to the 3DS as the design improved over time. Yeah, the Wii U has a legacy alright, maybe not for the reasons Nintendo wanted to, but it certainly has one. In terms of the future Nintendo products that came out of it instead of what the public thinks, it's actually pretty good. You see, quite a few games on the Switch are direct or expanded ports of Wii U games. This includes the most sold Switch game of them all, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Also, if it wasn't for the ideas developed with the Wii U, there's still a high chance that the Switch wouldn't exist right now. However, the 3DS still beats it out of the park in this category simply because of its public legacy. The gaming community looks back on the whole DS and 3DS era in such a good light, mainly because of how it made so many people's childhoods. Ah, good times. So we add up the scores, and the winner is the 3DS. I don't think too many people will be surprised at the outcome, especially with the public reception of the Wii U. I'm not saying that the Wii U is a bad console by any means, it's just a lot more flawed compared to the 3DS line. I think the main thing we can take away from this is, one, I like talking about things five years too late, and two, whoever made this box art deserves to be sacked. They made me eat a potato. It's torture. Should I call the cops?